It has been a a uh, an intense week, right, for everybody. And and so I think mostly when I'm thinking of myself, not not talking about this organization, but myself for my family. You know, I don't I don't I, you know we had talked about. I don't think they were prepared. I have been very good about not reading, not listening, not really being concerned with. Um, but I have had to remind my family, and, and I, I'm glad I do, because that just shows the loyalty we have to each other uh, about, listen, man, the, the, the Lord is our defender. He's our, you know, he promotes, he directs. And, and so you don't be concerned with outside. I felt, you know, I felt conviction about the, the opportunity. I knew I was going to take it for um, for those reasons, and, and I have no um yeah, I got, I got no qualms with what anybody says about their opinion. Great. Uh, if they disagree with it, still love them. Not really worried about it. I got other things I got to take care of. Jeff Saturday, coach of the Colts, pretty much summarizing what it means to have thick skin in today's world. Jim Ursay, no thick skin there. All you critics, you criticize all of us in the NFL for losing. When we make the right moves to win, you act so righteous. Who you crap and just win, babe? What is who you crap in a reference to? I have no idea. that I should understand? No, I, not that crapping? I know. I was just about to ask you the same thing. It's the, the first thing I thought of when I read it yesterday. I was just like, who you crap in? What is that? I mean, just win, baby, is obviously a shot at the Raiders. Right. Uh, but, yeah, who you crap in? I, I, I don't know. That's, that's new. Uh, the, the kids are going to have to teach me that one. What a shock that Jim Irsay would be a bad winner. I mean, just just take solace in the fact that it wasn't a complete disaster. And also remember, I checked the schedule. You don't play the Raiders every week. Hmm. Just a just a just a just a reminder, Jimmy. You got some games coming up that aren't going to be quite as easy as what you got, sir. But but a tremendous accomplishment because it was the biggest incident of self-inflicted dysfunction during a season that I can ever remember, short of maybe, maybe, the Browns announcing in November of 1995 that they'd be moving to Baltimore at the end of the season because that just threw the rest of a promising Browns season into the toilet once Art Modell made that announcement. This was a tremendously disruptive and distracting and dysfunctional development, and kudos to Jeff Saturday. Did enough to turn it around to win. My question, Chris, though, yeah. is, is, yeah, can they keep it going? Can they, can they, will they, once people figure out what Jeff Saturday's Colts do, will they be able to stay ahead? You know, the self scout, putting in all the time, putting in all the effort, grinding and grinding and grinding, coming up with that little edge that makes a difference. Will they be able to do it? And we'll see. Yeah. We'll I get to see them literally three times in the next seven games, prime time. And those games aren't getting flexed. The Sunday night game against the Cowboys is not getting flexed. They're four, five, and one. Why would it be flexed? Right. No, I, I, you know, listen, I, I think there's some things that he can tangibly bring to the table here that we saw in the game the other night. Or the other day is, you know, first off, you know, the energy he can bring to the team and and changing, you know, kind of the attitude in the building. Yeah, there's definitely the ability to do that for sure. So, you know, and I think we saw a different vibe from them as a football team. The fact that he got to one again, have a quarterback, Matt Ryan, as the quarterback uh, to me was a big issue. I mean, poor Frank Reich has to bench Matt Ryan because of financial issues and then gets held accountable for, hey, the offense doesn't look very good. Well, no shit. I mean, duh. I mean, we, we yeah, we got it. We put a quarterback in because we're trying to save money for the future and not be accountable for that. And we put a guy in that wasn't ready, obviously. So that was bad. I feel bad for Frank right there. But he can change the attitude that Colts defense is real. The Colts defense is like legit one of those top five-ish type of defenses. So they can keep him in the game. And then the one thing I do look at here with Jeff Saturday, and I don't know, I'll be excited to kind of watch this on film, is did he bring some to the run game a little bit? We haven't seen them run the ball like they did the other day. And Jeff Saturday, an ex-offensive lineman, man, I'd have a hard time thinking he didn't, one, give the offensive line a pep talk, which I know he did and I heard about that, but also maybe just – a different, hey, wait, when the defense plays this, we, we used to like to block it this way and run this play a whole lot. So I'm, I would bet there was some influence there that helped the football team, and we'll see where it goes. But, yeah, I mean, again, I think we were all fair in, in questioning or criticizing a move that we've never seen done before like this in the history of the NFL. And what struck me yesterday, too, Jeff Saturday told Peter King that 
one of the reasons he took the job was specifically for the reason of helping other former players get opportunities. I just don't. You get opportunities. Jeff, you could have been offensive line coach twice and you said no. The, the idea that you could be a former player and walk through the door as the head coach, I still don't like it. It's an affront to the people who are actually busting their asses, putting in the time, making the sacrifices, being away from their families for far less money or glory than being the head coach of the team. The idea that some guy that played for the team more than a decade ago can just show up out of the blue and be the head coach, I just don't think that's fair to the profession. And this kind of echoes what Bill Cowher said on NFL Today that it's it's a disgrace to the profession. I it it's and I know that I say all the time football's not as hard as people like to make it seem right. to be, but it's also not as easy as it looks on TV either. Yeah. Yeah. I it it is. There's a lot that goes on here. You know, and and Frank Reich and what he did, he laid the train the 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 tracks down here for this football team. It's not like they're going to change the way they play football. Gus Bradley's been running the Seattle scheme. He invented that. That's Jeff Saturday's not changing anything there. Offensively, it's not like they're like, whoa, let's blow up the playbook and we're going to do something else. They're still running the same offense. It's just maybe the attitude and the approach has changed a little bit through Jeff Saturday. So, hey, it, maybe he can weather the storm and continue to make them competitive and all that. But I think some of the things we really question – and where it goes, that'll be if he keeps the job for next year. And now when the team has to really take on his culture and his style and, you know, how he manages players in offseason and starts to accumulate the coaching staff the right way, that'll be more of a real evaluation of what he can do as a head coach. Right now he's kind of just a Band-Aid who's looking to give some energy to a football team. And uh, we'll see where it goes. It was a great start. It was. There's no doubt about it. Um, but But – yeah, this was unusual, and it goes against everything we know in football. And that's where, you know, the Bill Cowers of the world and some of those other guys are questioning that. And, and I, I understand that completely. Here's the other thing, too. All those other people who are on the staff, one of the reasons they're busting their asses is because they're trying to get to the point where they earn that opportunity. If all of a sudden you don't have to earn that opportunity anymore – Maybe they'll go coaching college or something. I it's 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 you're you're working your way up the pyramid to the top as an assistant coach, and you want to become a you know, position coach, coordinator, and then if you do well enough, you become a head coach. If that gets short circuited, that that may that may hurt the profession, and it may cause talented people to say, why why even bother to try to earn this? if people who haven't earned it are going to be given the job that I'm trying to earn. And I think that's a real point. I think that would apply in any industry, in any profession. Why am I here busting my ass if my ultimate door that I'm trying to kick through isn't available to me and the owner's just going to go hire somebody who's never coached before after I've been here all the time? It's, 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 it's important, and we'll see how it plays out. Let's take a break. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.